Hi guys, Adam here and today I'd like to show you a great and very simple modification for anyone from ready-made and available components that will give you the cheapest professional viewfinder that you can use with any kind of camera. But from the beginning, a while ago I was looking for a good viewfinder that will be solid, easy to use and must have HDMI and SDI ports. As we all know, almost all super professional electronic viewfinders are quite expensive, especially if they have an SDI port. By the way, not only the new ones, because even on eBay it is difficult to find some second-hand ones in a good price. So imagine how surprised I was when I found a viewfinder from Portkeys that has exactly everything I need and cost only about $500. I thought this might be a great deal, especially because I use a monitor from Portkeys, which is one of my favorites. But I also thought it was too good to be true, so I decided to do some research. Now, most of the reviews that I found on YouTube were very good in terms of this equipment, but from a few of them I learned about some downsides, which mainly had to do with the plastic body and the bad eyepiece quality. There are really a lot of these videos, so to save your time, I think there is only one that you should watch. But why is this video so important in my opinion? Because Torsten very clearly covered all the issues of this device, but more importantly, he found a brilliant solution for this problem, but about that in a moment. Look, in my opinion, Porky's viewfinder, let's say it's a halfway grade. I mean, all the electronics, SDI and HDMI port, different power options, good quality screen, waveform, histogram, peaking, false color, and all the internal options, it's all there and it all works really great. The problem is the second part, which is the optical viewfinder and the eyepiece. And at this point, I will also be honest. This part of this device sucks. Poor quality plastic, really bad quality foam and glue coming away, it looks terrible and very unprofessional. The fact is that if you compare it with other such equipment, actually a viewfinder that has HDMI and SDI for $500 is almost like for free, but on the other hand, for many of us, is a bunch of money, so for that price, I would still expect something more professional. On top of that, the eyepiece is the worst part of this device, because you can see perfectly only when your eye is right in the center of the lens, just move your eye to either side and everything seems blurry and out of focus. Well, but let's move on. If something doesn't work right, then it needs to be fixed or replaced. But before we do that, please subscribe to my channel if you learn something new. I will be really grateful and it will help me make even more cool videos for you guys. Now, the eyepiece and viewfinder body which I am talking about and that we want to replace is basically exactly the same as a regular optical viewfinder designed for smaller camera and smartphone screens. The optical viewfinder is basically a plastic box that you put on the camera screen and on the other side it has a built-in eyepiece and magnifying lens so you can see every detail on such a small display. On top of that, most such viewfinders have adjustable diopter which allows you to adjust the loop to your individual visual needs. And what's more, some good viewfinders have special eye cap that blocks all the outside light so you can see everything perfectly even when you're shooting directly into the sun. Now, you will find really a lot of such viewfinders on the market and I am sure that many of them can also be easily modified and combined with Porky's viewfinder, while in the video I am talking about, Torsten uses Zacuteo ZFinder Pro, mainly because it is very compatible in terms of the size for the Porky's display, but that's just part of the reason why it is the best choice. First of all, Zacuto is one of the best companies that produce optical and electronic viewfinders. Unfortunately, they are not the cheapest one and for a brand new ZFinder Pro which we will modify, you have to pay a lot of money. But the main reason why it is the best option is the price of second-hand ones that you can easily find on eBay. I bought mine in almost perfect condition for about $60. Now, of course, such a modification is not perfect and this part will not fit together out of the box. I mean, yeah, you can of course try to connect them in a various ways, even with original brackets and tape, but the best option is simply a special 3D printed adapter. At this point, once again, a big round of applause for Torsten, because he not only designed such an adapter, but also made it available to everyone totally for free. The ready to print version of this model you will find in the description under his video, so all you need to do is to find someone with a 3D printer and that's it. For a few bucks you have everything you need, something amazing. 
What's more, if you don't have time to take care of it, or you don't have anyone with such a printer, then just write to Torsten because, as far as I know, he still has a few such adapters for sale. Amazing guy. Now, the whole process of this conversion may look like quite a complicated job because you have to unscrew the whole body, which is where the very sensitive electronics are. But I guarantee you that anyone with a bit of manual skills and a little patience can do it without the smallest problem. In Torsten's video, everything is perfectly explained step by step and you will even find information of which tools to use for this. For me personally, the whole conversion took about 10 minutes and I had a one complication because I have pretty big fingers and when I removed the original tape from the screen, I accidentally unplugged the cable that connects the display. At the first moment, when I put in the battery, I was pretty sure that I had damaged something because the display simply didn't work, but I took it apart again and after connecting these cables, everything works fine. That's why a few rules are so important during this modification. The most important rule is simply take your time. Remember that you are working on electronics that are very sensitive. Prepare yourself some desk space, a good light and the right tools. Probably the most complicated and delicate thing you have to do is to remove the tape that holds the display to the case. So do it carefully, piece by piece, be careful to not pull the display too hard to avoid making the same mistake that I did. Ok, so now when the adapter is properly attached, all you have to do is insert this little device to your ZFinder and that's it. The viewfinder is ready to use and now works completely different from the original version. The image is much larger, much crisper and perfectly sharp over the entire viewing range of the eyepiece and what's more, the eye cap completely covers all the unnecessary light. So yeah, basically with this modification you can improve all the issues that I mentioned at the beginning and exactly as Torsten says, from a toy we make a pretty professional tool. The last thing I want to show you is how to build a cheap and functional mount for this viewfinder and for this I use a combination of clamps and tubes from Smallrig. I attach an adjustable monitor mount and rod clamp directly to the viewfinder. And on the camera side, I attach a NATO clamp with the same road clamp. Now, I have a vertical NATO style rail in my camera cage, but in fact you can put such a rail on any camera cage and that's it. Now, such a mount gives me any kind of viewfinder configuration depending on how I operate the camera. And besides, you can adjust the resistance on all the connectors, so changing the viewfinder's position is quick, smooth and basically can do it with one hand. Guys, if such a conversion is too complicated for you and you're afraid to do it yourself because you don't have experience or just don't have manual skills, don't worry because I'm sure any electronic technician in your neighborhood will do it for a few bucks. In fact, the only downside to such a modification is that I think you definitely lose your warranty after unscrewing this body case, but I will really honestly tell you that is worth the risk. If I were to compare this viewfinder before and after modification, I would say that these are two completely different classes of device. The adapter from Torsten makes it all fit together perfectly and basically if you are a bit lucky and if you can find a cheap used Z finder, you get in return a great professional viewfinder with HDMI and SDI with various power options and with a bunch of professional tools. Of course, it looks different if you can't find a used one because if you had to buy a new ZFinder, it already makes a price for which you can easily find a used Blackmagic viewfinder for example, which has a much better display and in terms of quality it's much better than such a configuration. But as I said here, a huge major benefit is the option of HDMI and SDI and two types of power sources, which is something that you won't find in many other models of this kind of gear. Guys, so I hope that after watching this video, maybe some of you will design another adapter for an even cheaper but also good optical viewfinder, but what's more important to me at this point is that I'm really very happy that there are people like Torsten in our community who instead of complaining that something works wrong, just improve it and which is more important, share that knowledge with everyone. Guys, that's all for today, hope you enjoyed the video and see you in the next one.